Hey, welcome to our time today. We're in Isaiah chapter 32. We sort of have a bad news story and a good news story here. We'll start off with the bad news, and then we'll get to the good news. Isaiah approached women with his message, and uh, you know who knows why. John Oswald is the man that I read, and he believes Isaiah went to the women thinking maybe they would listen and they would persuade their husbands to listen. Maybe, maybe not. Here's what he has to say. Let me, before I get into it, let me just say, a lot of the doom and gloom that Isaiah prophesied was in hopes that people would hear and repent. So it was like, you know, telling your child, don't run, go run out in the street. So, you know, if they you know, would listen to your warning, they wouldn't run out of the street. Uh, that's the idea, okay? So he says, verse 9, Rise up, you women who are at ease. Hear my voice, you complacent daughters. Listen to my speech. Then he tells them, Tremble, women who are at ease. Shudder, you complacent ones. Uh, because things are going to come, and it's going to be really difficult. And you're going to engage in the traditional ways of expressing grief. And he gets in verse 13, he says, well, the soil of my people is going to be nothing but thorns and briars. It's going to be really hard for you. Uh, and the palace, the place of, of the kings, is going to be forsaken. And the city of Jerusalem is going to be deserted. Tough times are going to come. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, what, what makes me... Uh what builds the foundation for that particular story is the parable of the sower. Mm -hmm. And really what's going on is that God's people, this grain, actually has all the weeds and thorns that grow up against them, grow up with them, and squeeze out uh, the nutrients of the ground. And I think that this is an example of of the parable of the sower from the Gospels. And interestingly, the parable of the sower is the only parable that is in all four of the Gospels. Right, you're right. So we need to hear the negative. And uh, these are some passages that I would love to skip. I'd like to just breeze on by, but they are a warning to us. God is real, God is involved in the earth, if we do not trust God, life is going to be hard for us. That's part of it. Yeah. The weeds uh, right. steal some of the goodness. That is correct. Uh, that happens in our lives. So now we're going to come down to the fun stuff, I hope. He talks about a spirit from on high is poured out on us. And the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and the fruitful field is deemed a forest. I very frequently talk about people in recovery. I know a lot of folks who, thank God, have, have gotten into recovery and they're, they're no longer addicted to drugs. They had to hit rock bottom and then at rock bottom they looked up and they turned to God. They usually turned to AA and AA led them to God. But, but they came to a place where the Spirit of God could come upon them. Uh, and then he says, then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness abide in the fruitful field. And the effect of righteousness will be peace and the result of righteousness, quiet and trust forever. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation. Rudy? Well, what you were talking about of people hitting rock bottom is a metaphor for what we're all hoping for. And what we're all hoping for is this, this image of a place of peace and righteousness and people not being uh, bad to one another, that they actually practice uh, the doing unto others as you would have done unto you. Right. And in this place also we know who's the king and right. Jesus is the king. So we individually uh, get this, this happenstance in our lives, but ultimately it's only a small image of what we're hoping for, that we will be one with him as he is one with the Father. Right. So the word peace is the Hebrew word shalom. Yeah. Expand that word for us, Rudy. It, it, uh, it's really a greeting and it's peace unto you. And uh, 
and the response usually is, and unto you all as well. It's an eternal word. This is a universal truth. When someone finds the Lord or the Lord finds them, right. uh, they do experience peace. Right, right. And, but this is only a foretaste of the peace that he offers for eternity. Yeah, yeah. When I think about peace, I think about well-being. And uh, how many people would say, well, well-being is that my life will be defined by righteousness and justice. Or is it, I get a new car, I get a better house, I win the lottery, I have my kids all graduate and do quite well, whatever, you know. But when Isaiah talks about peace, two of the words that are always around peace are righteousness, that is following God's direction. Righteousness is, you know, living in a correct relationship with the Lord. And justice, dealing justly with other people. We talked yesterday about those nobles, the noblemen, a, a wide open heart. And so justice is someone who has a wide open heart to other people. And Isaiah will tell us, because he's speaking God's eternal truth that we were just talking about prior to videoing this, uh, that noble heart is caring for other people and being a part of God's plan. You want to have the last word? Well, for me, righteousness, we get, we are able to be on Jesus' right side exactly. because we believe. Right. And if we believe what he says, then actually we will do just, but justice. But we have to know what the universal truth of good actually is. Right. There is no other good except what's in this book. Right. Uh, a lot of people have tried to explain what's in this book and they've caused a lot of problems because their vision of how God works is too small. And they're not seeing the eternal plan that every generation has this problem. But if you believe, you will be one with him as he is one with the Father. Absolutely. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you for being a part today. God bless you. Keep on studying. See you tomorrow.